All right, so we just had an update pushed for Snap, the February 21st patch of version 12.12. .12. And this one is uh, kind of spicy. There's a few things that are really, really cool about this that I don't think are readily apparent. So, of course, the series downgrade happened. So Silver Surfer, Noel, Hawk, and Sentry all are going down to four. Agent Coulson, Maria Hill, Helicarrier are all going down to Series 3. So those should be more attainable. I think the Series 5 to 4 downgrade is a lot more impactful than the 4 to 3. But... There are still some pretty decent uses from Coulson. Uh, every once in a while, I see a Maria Hill or Helicarrier, and the downgrade happened a little bit faster than what I was expecting. And so then moving on to the actual card updates, Hawk goes from a 4-1 to a 4-0. So not a very big change in reality, but what I am thinking is that it makes him better if you're just playing a Mr. Negative deck and you slot him into just the negative deck. You don't have to necessarily have enablers. Because if he doesn't get hit, he's a 4-6. If he does get hit, he's a 0-10, uh, which is still pretty strong. I don't think this necessarily derails anything that he was good in before. But it is interesting to see that they will be monitoring his performance to see if he needs some further tweaks. And then the next one is kind of a surprise to me. We have Thanos. Thanos is going from a 6-8 to a 6-11. So a straight buff in terms of power. And this is interesting to me because Thanos decks already feel like one of the best decks in the game. And now he's even a little bit stronger. So a lot of those decks that are running well have the Lockjaw Casino component. And so you're just going to have some extra power push on the board potentially if you happen to cycle into him. And then if not... A 6-11 on the last turn is pretty decent if you don't have a better play line, or if you do have all of the stones and you have the power stone on the board, a 6 cost 21 power is huge and could be the game breaking difference. This is really surprising to me, I think it's probably going to be surprising to a lot of others out there, is because Thanos already feels in a really really good spot, not playing that card itself, but just overall the archetype feels really really strong, and so I'm really curious how this upgrade is going to affect it in the long run. And then the next one is one that I don't know how this is going to shake things up. Sandman is going from a four cost one power to a five cost five power. So now he is a little bit higher tempo on a five cost drop, but it is going to restrict the opponent from dropping those cards on that turn. You're not going to have multiple turns to kind of feel out your play. So I think think he'll be decently useful, but I don't know that this just breaks him wide open. He'll be decent against a couple of archetypes as kind of a surprise factor. So if they're running a death wave and you just drop your Sandman on five, that's going to make it a lot harder for them to force all of that power onto the board. Or if you're running up against a Sarah tech deck, you might be able to drop him on five, maintain tempo, and then they can only drop one card on that last turn. But otherwise, I don't know how impactful this will be. It will really be meta dependent and what kind of archetypes you're facing. So if you're running into a lot of the dirty 30 of the She-Hulk and the Infinite combo, then this might become a more relevant card. But in terms of just value, I don't know. He's still going to be a tech card, but I think it feels less bad to use him rather than dropping all of your tempo for a one power card on turn four. One thing that comes to my mind that's interesting to note is that at four cost, he was able to be used in unison with Zabu to be played on turn three that's not going to be able to happen anymore. And so it's going to be interesting to see how Sandman's play evolves. And I think it's a little bit too early to tell how good this will be. But I think overall he'll fit in a little bit better as a five cost kind of surprise drop rather than the four cost low tempo play. And then there were a couple of upgrades to Spider Woman. She's getting a one power buff. Uh, Namor is getting a one power buff. And then Dagger is getting a one power buff. So sometimes these one power differences can make the difference between a card being pretty relevant and just not seeing any play. Do I think that any of these three will just become meta defining? No, but I think it feels a little bit better to slot them in whenever you need to now. We have an update to Sakar. Before it would pull a card immediately after that location revealed, and it would create some kind of weird interactions between Storm and Wave. And so now the text is gonna be updated to after this turn, put a card from each player's hand here. And I kind of like this a little bit better. It gives you an extra turn to try to play around this location rather than it just being a complete surprise. And so you can try to play some of your cards and influence the chances that it pulls into a card that you actually want it to pull into versus something like a Carnage that destroys your whole lane. And then something that they slipped in that I think a lot of people are going to overlook is the change to Clintar's Symbiote. It's going to change from a one cost to a four cost. And I think this is impactful for a lot of reasons and so at one cost it gave killmonger some value you could use killmonger to destroy the symbiote and depending on how much power they stack there 
they were almost defenseless to it if you can have initiative on turn five. But now it's gonna be a four cost, so you're not gonna be able to use the cheeky Killmonger play, but this will be able to be pulled by Magneto now, and so that may become relevant in some games, and so it's gonna be important to know that it's a four cost card now rather than a one. And then looking at the bug fixes, the biggest one to note for me is the Absorbing Man fix. So before he wouldn't work correctly when used in locations like Kamartage or used in combination with a Wong or an Odin, it wouldn't correctly double that effect. So even if he was used in the Wong lane, it would trigger the Wong number of times. It would only trigger once instead of two. Kamartage, the same thing. And with Odin, it wouldn't function correctly in these locations either. And so now that's going to be fixed. So I think Wong Absorbing Man combos are going to be a little bit more consistent. And one extra trigger of a really impactful on reveal could be the difference between winning or losing. So looking at a Gambit, one additional card destruction could be a game breaking change. One additional trigger of Hazmat could change the outcome of the game drastically. Silver Surfer, White Tiger, the list kind of goes on and on. But I think this bug fix is going to be really impactful for certain archetypes. And then one that I almost missed, it's not impactful for the game necessarily, but Mysterio's Illusions now use Mysterio's variant. Having a variant has a little bit more value now versus what it did before. And so overall, I think this patch has a lot of good changes, a lot of good updates, and I'm really excited to see how this shakes up the metagame. I think Hawk will still be relevant. I think Thanos is still going to be all over the place. I'm really curious to see how Sandman plays out and how Absorbing Man plays out now that they are updated. And so overall, I think it's a decent patch. I am a little bit afraid of the Thanos power, but otherwise, I think it bumps a couple of cards in the right direction. And the biggest win of all is the series downgrade. So now some of those really cool cards are much more accessible.